All right. Shalom to the nation of Israel. First and foremost, before I get into my lesson, I want to start off giving all praises unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Raka, Kodash. Second, double honors to our apostles and elders of great millstone that teach and rule well today. And also, salutation to the fellow laborers that's in the ministry pushing the word of Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, in all truth and sincerity, day in and day out. Shalom. I'm the brother Chakwat Gabar from the Great Millstone, South Carolina, Mittens Camp. Coming at you with another quick lesson. And as always, this message goes out to you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, which we are the true biblical Hebrew Israelites according to the Bible. And also to the Israelite foreigners that scattered amongst the other nations and it may look like a typical heathen of another nation but if your bloodline goes back to negro latino or native american descent by the seed of your father you consider an israelite as well according to the bloodline and also of the spirit and power of yahweh bahashim yahweh shai so shalom to you brothers and sisters that scattered worldwide and that's in the faith and the zot in the name of Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shah. Shalom. Uh, so I'm gonna get into a quick lesson. And I'm probably gonna title this this lesson is that what manner of person you ought to be. Okay. And that's uh a scripture or a verse from out of Second Peter chapter three, um, verse eleven. Okay, because you know, we're coming into the time. Who the world calls God, Yahweh, and his son, Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Christ, is on the verge of uh, bringing America down, which is Babylon the Great, and taking Esau, Edom, the so-called white white race, out of power, man. Okay? And us knowing that's evolved into this truth, the ministry, the believers, okay? We know that we have to prepare ourselves spiritually and mentally that the times that we're approaching, which known in the scriptures, is Jacob's trouble, okay? Jacob represent you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans, you Israelites. As you can see, the signs of prophecies, things are happening uh, more and more when it comes to Esau's agenda that he want to establish his new world order, his one world government, and now we are facing the point of they pushing, you know, these mandates, uh, uh, that's that's falling after these these jabs. How they are forcing the people, forcing it on the people, to the point that they want to take away people's rights, so-called social rights. When it comes to you know going out, shopping, dining, and if you don't have proof of being uh, activated, you okay, of receiving the thing. They'll label you, you know, as radicals, resistance, that you're the problem. Hey, but that's the Esau Edom, man. And we know more and more, according to the scriptures, that he have but a short time, knowing he have but a short time. And he's ready to come down with that great wrath, which is in Revelation chapter 12, verse 12. Okay, so knowing all these that's about to take place, the plagues, such as famine, more pestilence, uncivil unrest. Knowing these things, and you calling yourself an Israelite, and uh, you're a believer, what mind frame you should be in, what manner of person you ought to be. Because we got a lot of individuals amongst us that saying that they're Israelites, they believe. But majority of these Israelites, the mind frame is not geared toward the time of um, uncivil unrest, the time of all hell breaking loose chaos that's about to you know take place here upon the earth a lot of these individuals amongst israel especially you know israelite camps that's outside of great millstone okay they're not pushing the motb which is in revelation chapter 13 verse 16 being the you know the rfid that that's going to be the next currency that's going to replace the dollar and that the pushing of these mandated um v's or basically a forerunner 
a gun pushing the RFID. Okay? Because this place is on the verge of collapse. As you can see, how this economy is constantly uh, falling at a rapid rate. And you got individuals that's not really giving warning of these teachers amongst Israel, okay, which known as false prophets, man. They telling, you know, they 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 pushing the narrative or they pushing uh, how they feel and not actually being in the spirit of Yahweh Bashim was shot. Okay? They pushing against, like I said, the MOTB being the RFID. They pushing that you can go ahead and take the um the Vanessa, okay, and become activated in this man's system. They don't push the name of the Lord. Okay, a lot of uh, uh, false doctrines and damnable heresies that a lot of these other Israelite camps push outside of Great Millstone that's not given warning. And a lot of these, a lot of those individuals amongst these other camps that follow in their false teaching. They don't know what manner of person they ought to be, man. They don't know that, you know, you know, preparing yourself spiritually and for the trials and tribulations that's about to come. Okay? A lot of them in it for just entertainment, for clout, to be seen of men, want to be rappers, want to, you know, just wear the fringes and feel important because they join the Israelite camp because, you know, they promote uh, mirth. All about partying. All about having a good time. Well, we're not in the time of that, man. We're in the time of great death and destruction. And that's what we're giving warning. Starting from our apostles and elders of Great Millstone and the brothers on down that's like-minded, that's in the spirit and power of Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh giving the warning. But that's what a true prophet is going to be doing. As the time we come into, man. As you can see things, all hell is about to break loose. And you got individuals out there amongst Israel that's clueless, that 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 don't know what they're involved in, man. Not knowing the seriousness of the wrath of the Lord that's about to take place. So I'm gonna go ahead and get into the scriptures. Like I say, I'm gonna start off with uh, 2 Peter <clears throat> chapter 3. And I'll start off with verse um, 9. And it says, The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness. Okay, and that's we got a lot of individuals amongst Israel that know the Israelites. They're not taking the word of Yahweh Bashim Yahushua seriously. And you got individuals of our people that don't subscribe to themselves being Israelites, but into this way of this world that's fighting after this system, that upholding the ways of America, the customs of the heathens, going after these false doctrines, these false gods, these idols. Okay? And when we go out there to tell them, hey, prepare and repent to come back and serve your power, Yahweh, by Hashem, was shot. Because destruction is coming. And only the elect of the 144,000 and the one third is going to be saved through the spirit of Yahweh, by Hashem, was shot. By their power, man. And that's the Lord's will. But the majority of our people, they don't want to take heed to that. They don't want to take heed that we tell them that America is going down. And ultimately, this place is going to be destroyed by thermonuclear missiles, that we're approaching the time of uh, Jacob's trouble, the time of martial law, the time of uncivil unrest, famine, okay? And that's what the Lord promised. He promised great destruction that's going to come upon America and the downfall of Esau, Edom, okay? But they caught the Lord promise as slack. And it says, um, Peter, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Okay? And that's what the Lord set up the ministry to do. Okay, to go out there and teach the nation of Israel. Okay, and the Lord is long suffering. That's why we're in the time or the, the time of mercy, the time of on uh, the grace period, while the Lord have his men out there to teach, but soon to come. Okay, the grace period is going to be over with. And now hell is about to break loose. And the ones that the Lord only going to um, um, hold dear, near to itself, the ones that's going to truly repent is the election, the 144,000 and the one third. Okay, that was, those are the ones that's not going to perish because they're going to take heed to Yahweh Shemal word 
and the Lord already had it designated, predestinated, that it's going to be the elect. Okay, our job is just to go out there and teach, okay, with the scriptures, and the Lord is going to do the one that's going to do the calling and the, and the, and the chosen, the sealing of the elect. And we pray you how about you, Shah, that we're part of that number ourselves. That's why the scripture says what? Give diligent to make thy calling and election sure. So that's why we out there, man. To see, to see Yahweh Bashim was shot and to be in the good graces of the Lord. Okay, so we can be saved, man. And be the Lord's will. But it says, continue on. Verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. And they're going into what? Undespected. Underwear. Because a lot of our people, man, they see us out there pushing the word. They see us out there um, preaching. But they're not taking heed. Okay, they scoff and scorn. They fight after the ways of this world. And they don't feel like or don't see that this place is going down, man. Show you how spiritual blinded uh, two-thirds of our people are. Because that's the number that's going to be blinded to destruction. As it is written in Zechariah chapter 13, verse 8. Okay? So they're not taking heed. And, you know, they fought us um, getting the, you know, the, the jab and to be activated. Okay? They, they always, you know, uh, uh, turn their nose up at the prophets by the way of they scoffing and scorning. But all these signs are showing toward this place going down. And the Lord is about to be on the verge of return to bring great destruction. And the Lord set up his prophets to speak it. Okay? Hey, but they don't want to take heed. So when all hell break loose, it's going to catch them as a thief in the night, unsuspected, unaware. Let me continue on. And it says, But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that there are in shall be burnt up. And ultimately, that's going to happen, by the way, of those thermonuclear missiles at the climax of World War III that we're um, approaching at this time. Okay? And like I mentioned, America destiny in the near future, the final destination is going to be thermonuclear missiles destroying this place. Right along when Yahweh shot, when he returned with the host of angels, what the world called UFOs, and he's going to bring war to these nations, military, and he's going to bring fire upon uh, America with those chariots. Okay? And by the way, the, of, the, of the thermonuclear missiles, let me get this real quick. I'm going to go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 65, uh, verse, so like it, Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15. And it says, For behold, the Lord will come with fire and with the chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. So that's the way to, how the Lord is coming. Who the world calls Christ, Yahweh Shai, okay, his name, that is his name in the Paleo Hebrew, meaning he is the deliverer, okay, Yahweh Shai. Yahweh Shai is coming back with fire by the way of those chariots, those so called UFOs, which are the hosts of angels, okay, to bring destruction. And it says, and it says, to render his anger with fury and his rebuke with flames of fire. For by fire and by his sword, Will the Lord plead with all flesh and said, for by fire and by his sword. Okay, the fire represent those chariots. The Lord coming back with fire with those chariots. And also that sword represent great destruction and mainly those thermonuclear missiles. That's also going to bring fire and engulf this place with flames, man. And when John seen the destruction of America, he, he, he wrote it down as what? A lake of fire. Because America is a vast land. And how about Shemal Shah is going to burn this place up, man? Okay? Oh, Salaki, give me a second. All right. Shalawan, Israel. Okay, I'm back. Had a um, quick in, in, um, interruption. You know, Satan, man. I'm going to pray that this lesson be edifying, you know, you know, that kind of quench the spirit, but I'm going to keep going, going. Like I'm saying, man, you know, like the times that we're into, man, and that, you know, I left off from 
that Yahweh Bashim is going to bring fire to this place by the way of those chariots and that great destruction. Uh, by the way, also through those thermonuclear missiles that's going to desolate this place. And as I say, man, when John seen the destruction of America, he's seen it glow off in, in flames and call it a lake of fire, man. Because I've been mentioning that this land, America, is a vast land. Yahweh Bashim is going to destroy the whole land. So knowing that, man, we're supposed to be in the mind frame of individuals that seriously, they supposed to be seeking Yahweh Bashim Shah for salvation and being repentant. And a lot of our people amongst Israel and ones that's into the world, it is not, they're not in that mind frame. They're not preparing themselves. So that's it on uh, Isaiah chapter 65. Let me see on um, verse. I'll start, I'll read it again. Uh, Isaiah chapter 66, verse uh, 16. And it says, For by fire and by his sword will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. So there's going to be a lot of casualties, man, a great death, okay, that's going to take place here in the land of America. Even before those thermonuclear missiles, you're going to have a lot of people that's going to perish, man, okay, when the Lord sends the different plagues upon uh, America. But the ultimate plague is going to be those thermonuclear missiles. Okay, that's going to leave this place desolate. So by the, by the Lord saying what? By fire and by his sword, he will plead with all flesh. He's going to judge by the way of those chariots and those thermonuclear missiles. Now, let me get back into the book of uh, Second Peter, chapter 3. And I'll start off at verse um, 11. And it says, seeing that all these things shall be dissolved, what manner of person ought ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? Yeah, kind. Knowing we knowing that Yahweh Bashim is going to destroy this place by thermonuclear fire, and by the way of those chairs, what manner you ought, what manner of person you ought to be in all holy conversation and godliness. And that's what we're looking forward to, man. Okay? Being in the holy conversation, speaking what's right according to the doctrine and other spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim was shy. Okay? And and looking to receive salvation. A lot of these individuals amongst Israel, they come in with the wrong mind frame, thinking that everything's good. Okay? And not preparing themselves for the times of trouble, which is gonna lead to their downfall, man. See, now we're coming to the time of Yahweh Bashim Shah gathering the true believers the true worshipers okay because now you're seeing a lot of these individuals amongst israel these other camps that their folly is being manifest by the things they are saying that's not uh adding up scripture of the doctrine that's not of the spirit of yahweh but they was shot but they coming out uh coming to please themselves and coming with their own doctrine okay as it says, what their own belly. Let me get that real quick. And I'm going to go to the, this is the book of Romans. Chapter 16, verse 17. And it says, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. And that word mark there means to what? Scopeo. Okay. Meaning to watch. And that's what we're doing, man. Start with our apostles and elders of Great Millstone on down. When we see these other camps going off, and you know, these, they, these especially the main thing now they're bunking up against is the MOT being the RFID. Okay? Saying it's something else besides the, the CHIP. Okay? So we got to mark those individuals. Because they cause it what defenses and, and, and con off div division and, conf and offenses contrary to the doctrine man to give that warning to individuals that's following them okay and we can see man with the times we coming to and the lord manifesting more and more the prophecy especially where the motb is really on the scene we can see a lot of those individuals amongst these other camps uh, amongst their congregations going to start you know start questioning their their leaders and therefore that's going to lead to them you know, you're going to have some that's going to leave out of that, man. Okay, because you're going to have a lack amongst um, these other camps that's going to wake up to the true understanding of the scriptures. 
and know what spirit to be in. And, and, and they have the discerning the times. Okay, because we're approaching the time of great judgment and this place downfall. And it's that close. Okay. <clears throat> so we're coming to that time, man. And it says, continue on. And it says, uh, now I beseech you, brother, mark them which cause division and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they are for they for they that are such serve not our Lord Yahweh Shai, but their own belly. Okay, so they ain't not in it for pushing the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. They in it for their own purpose. Okay? For their, for their own belly. They're doing it for clout. To be seen of men for money, 50 lucas sake. Okay? They, they're what they're doing it for, man, for 50 lucas. You know, for money. And that's going to lead to them being destroyed if they don't repent. And also to the ones that's followed them. They're going to be destroyed if they don't repent and, and, and dance to the right tune. Okay? To dance to what's written in the scriptures through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim was shot. And it says, For they that are such serve not our Lord Yahweh Shai, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. And that's who's going to get caught up, the simple ones of our people. They're following these false camps, these false leaders amongst Israel. They're following the ways of this world and these false leaders that uphold in this society as leaders and, and idols that our people look up to. And that's going to lead to their destruction. So knowing the times that we're in, and hey, what manner of person you ought to be. But more and more, man, we're getting closer to the point of this place downfall. Now let me get this right here. Now I'm going to go to the book of Ephesians. Chapter 5. Verse um verse 15. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. Seeing then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Okay, so we have to be redeeming the times. Okay, and this leaking back up into what? Second Peter chapter 3, um, verse 11, man. What manner of person you ought to be. In all holy conversation and godliness. And those individuals that's going to be in that mind frame is going to be redeeming the time. That's the elect mind frame. Redeeming the time and hastening in the coming of the day of the Lord, Yahweh Shai. And knowing what to expect through the Spirit of the Lord, that great judgment is coming. As we've seen that on the horizon, with Esau trying to, you know, push forth his agenda. Okay? So it says what? Seeing that you walk circumspectly, being aware, okay? Not as fools, but be as wise. Yeah, be as wise, not as fools, man. A lot of individuals amongst Israel, they are in the mind frame of foolishness. As you can see, they present themselves, you know, you know, when they um doing their videos and how they, you know, handle this truth, how they go about using their grace period, man. Okay, with 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 all over they all the things that they're doing is nothing but folly, man. Showing you that they're not redeeming the time. They're not being wise. When they're taking the truth as entertainment. And not knowing the seriousness of the truth. And not wanting to take heed to the correction that the Lord set up through his men to give them, to warn them. Okay? That we're not in the time of partiness or, or, or folly or, or, or mean like, like or, or, or mirth. That the structures is on its way. And it says, verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. And the evil mean, the word evil mean bad. Okay, bad times. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Okay, and don't let the elect is going to have that understanding. Knowing what the will of Yahweh Bashim Shai is. And his will is to bring destruction. Before the, the salvation, before the kingdom is going to be established, destruction is going to come. And Yahweh Shah is going to save, but it always, like I always say, man, for, for Yahweh Shah to save, that means you got to be saved from something. And what's that 
that you that we ought to have to be saved from the destruction that's coming the pen destruction that's coming man there's not a lot of people man they trying to live it up here okay trying to make this place their kingdom they make this place they rest but the scripture says this place is not our rest michael chapter 2 verse 10 okay but they want to enjoy their life here and forgetting the whole purpose why we in captivity that the lord put us in captivity for a punishment and have our enemies to rule over us mainly esau edom okay and we at the end of our captivity before the deliverance like i always say or like i said a destruction must come and esau ready to come down with that destruction now let me get this This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, verse 2. And it says, It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. Okay, so the next mind frame is going to be in the house of mourning. Okay? Because that's what's coming, man. The time of lamentation, mourning, death, destruction, sorrows. Okay? And it says it's better going to the house of mourning because that's what's going to lead to what? You preparing your mind, preparing yourself for the day of the Lord's wrath, man, and being, you know, having your eyes single toward Yahweh Bashmiah Shah and praying that you be found worthy to be delivered in that day. Okay? And it says, it is better to go into the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. Okay? Feasting going to what? Celebrating, eating, partying, living it up, man. That's what a lot of our people's mind frame is here today here in 2020 okay well, i believe what is the august the what the 11th if i'm not mistaken okay and you know and more and more if we come into the time of uh, speaking of the times that we in how they ready to bring the second you know ld the shutdown okay talks of them you know activating the towers the, you know, to send out a signal. And we believe that the ones that's activated, that receive the, the juice, they say that, you know, all type of stuff could be in there, man. And they go to activate these towers. And they want to see the response, man. Okay, through those signals. And when we speak of such things that, as this, and our people look at us as crazy. But they don't know the madness of Esau Edom when it comes to his technology and his, and his purpose to, to bring death. But, my, but our people in the mind frame of being in the spirit of, of, of mirth, being in the spirit of feasting. So, you know, expect more and more, but destruction is coming. And it says, verse 2, and it says for that, let me start it over. It is better to go into the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. Okay, so the elect is going to understand and lay it to their heart, meaning their mind. Knowing and what is examining and redeeming the times, man. Looking at the signs and knowing what's about to happen through the spirit and the power of Yahweh Bashim was shot. Okay. And it says, sorrow is better than laughter, for by sadness the conscience is the consciousness, the heart is made bitter. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. But the hearts of fools is in the house of mirth. Okay, so that's, you know, the heart of, of the wise what is in the house of mourning. Okay, understanding, knowing what times that we're coming into, man. That great judgment is about to take place. And seeking you how about you, my child, to be delivered in the times that we're approaching. But it says the hearts of fools is in the house of uh, in the house of mirth, just living it up, man, having fun. That's why, once again, when the Lord come back as a thief in the night, unexpected, the people, are, the ones of our people that mind frame is geared up to being comfortable in this place, and they're gonna be catch off guard, and that's gonna lead lead to their demise, man, to their destruction. That it on, that's it on that. I'm going to grab this real quick. This is Ezekiel chapter 21, verse 9. 
Son of man, prophesy to say, this say the Lord, a sword, a sword is sharpened and also furnished. And that sword represents destruction. Okay, it's because that's what's coming. It is sharpened to make a sore slaughter. It is it is furnished that it may glitter. Should we then make mirth? So we're not in the time of mirth, living it up. But well, the Lord already telling us that a, a sword is coming. Destruction is coming. It could tempt the right of my son as every tree. And he had given it to be furbished that it may handle. This sword is sharpened. It is furnished to give it into the hand of the slayer. And that's going to Esau Edom. Okay, that he's the slayer. And the Lord had given him the sword, okay, which represents his blessing and the power that come with it into his hand. And you're seeing that now, man, that he's furbishing that sword. Okay, when it comes to the draconian laws, these, you know, forced mandates as he's pushing his agenda. Okay, and also that's going to lead to what? The MOTB being implemented and being backed up by what? Martial law. His military troops that's going to take over, man. And you're seeing that now, man. They're ready to go into individuals' homes to get the, the deactivated or those that uh, end up uh, catching the, you know, the CV and they such a threat. Like over there in Israel, man. They over there going to, you know, the individuals' homes and taking their children away from them. That's going to come over here to America. They're ready to send the military to people's homes door to door to get the people activated. The ones that ain't deact the ones that ain't activated. Okay. The deactivated. Okay. Who didn't receive the thing. So they're moving full force, man. And that's the spirit of Yahweh about Shemiah was shot that he gave them the power to do it. On the left hand side to come down upon the wicked. Okay, uh, not just including their own people that they're doing against, but mainly you Negroes, Latino, Native Americans. As it continue on, in it says, verse 12, Cry and howl, son of man, for it shall be upon my people. It shall be upon the princes of Israel, you Negroes, Latino, Native Americans. Lord's going to allow Esau to come down with that wrath, man. And it says, Smite therefore upon my thigh. Okay, and that means what? Smite there upon the thigh. Mean that he's going to get into it, man. Lord going to put the spirit on Esau to enjoy it. And he's going to come down on you Negroes, Latino, Native Americans. The ones that's of the two-thirds. That don't believe in you. How about Shemiah was shot? And, and trusted in this place. And it's going to lead to your destruction. And the Lord allowed Esau to come down with that wrath. Uh, so that's it on that. So we're coming in that time. Let me get this. This is the book of back into the book of Isaiah. Chapter 65. Verse. Verse uh, 11. And it says, but ye are they that forsake the Lord. And that forget my holy mountain. That's going into two thirds. How are they forsaking the Lord, but not taking heed to the ministry that Yahweh by Shemiah was shot set up by the by the prophets to give them the warning to tell them to repent, but they forsake the Lord and going about you know following after the ways of this world. Okay, and constantly being in the in the, uh, the spirit of rebellious and, and, and promoting wickedness instead of being in the spirit of repentance. And it says. But ye are they that forsake the Lord, that forsake my holy mountain, that prepare a table for that troop, and that furnish the drink offering unto that number. Okay, so that's what the Lord is doing, man. And the troop represent what you saw Edom coming down with that wrath, man. And it says, Therefore will I number you to the sword, and ye shall all bow down to the slaughter. That's the two thirds. That's the number. The two thirds. That's going to bow down to the slaughter. When the Lord allowed Esau to come with that wrath. Because when I called, you did not answer. And then I spake, you did not hear. But did evil before my eyes and did choose that. Wherein I delighted not. And they done that by the way of not taking heed to the prophets. Okay. 
So they're going to be destroyed, man. For rejecting the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh And the Lord is going to give them over to their ruins when, the, when destruction comes. And it says, verse 13, Therefore, this say the Lord God, Behold, my servants shall eat, and that's going to the believers, the elect. They're going to eat in the time of famine, because that's what's coming. We're already on a, 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 a verge of a great famine. And two-thirds of our people, they're going to feel the wrath for that, of starvation. And it says, Behold, my servants shall eat, but ye shall be hungry. My servants shall drink, but ye shall be thirsty. My servants shall rejoice, but ye shall be ashamed. So Yahweh Bashim al is going to be with his election. Okay? Okay, and they're going to rejoice by glorifying Yahweh Bashim al when the Lord do these miracles and deliver them from the times of trouble. And that's what we're looking for to be part of, that hopeful elect, and be found in the good graces of Yahweh Bashim al -Shah. Okay? Yeah, but the two thirds, they're gonna be ashamed. Cause they're not taking heed of what manner a person they ought to be when it comes to knowing the times that we're in. And that's like I say, and that's including individuals amongst Israel that claim that they're in the truth. But they you know they're in the wrong spirit, man. They know they're Israelites, but they're in the wrong spirit. Okay, trying to, you know, mix uh worldly things with the truth. You're even going to serve Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, or you're going to go and stay into this world. Yahweh Shai said you can't serve two masters. You're even going to love one and hate the other. Okay? And the elect is going to serve Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. While these uh, other individuals amongst Israel, okay, that don't exalt Yahweh Shai, they don't give reverence to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, and they're not in the, they're not in the mind frame of uh, things that's about to happen. Destruction is about to come. So they're going to get caught up out there, man. That's that parable of the, the ten virgins. How that five was wise and five was foolish. And at the end of the parable, how the um, uh, how the, the bridegroom, which represents Yahweh Shai, when he returned, no five wise virgins, they had the oil, meaning represent the, the truth, the understanding. What they enter into the chamber, meaning that they was delivered through those chariots. But the five foolish virgins, hey, they was left behind and that destruction came. Okay. For them not receiving the oil. But the time they had, okay, they you know play around with the Greek spirit and not take the words of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah seriously. So let me get on. Um, I'm gonna get the book of Micah. And I'll get ready to close out. This is the book of Micah, chapter 2, verse 10. And it says, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with the sword destruction. And that's what's going to happen to, to our people that want to hold dearly to this place. Exalt this place. That sword destruction is going to come to them as we're approaching that time of the wrath and the plagues that the Lord is bringing. Okay? And it says what? Arise ye, depart, for this place is not our rest. And we're telling you that, that this place is not our rest, that this place is our captivity, and that Yahweh Shah is going to return and give us rest when he established the kingdom of Israel here on the earth. That's going to be our rest. But for right now, man, we're looking for salvation to be delivered from the oncoming on coming destruction that's about to take place especially here in America okay now let me get this and I'll close out this is the book of Romans chapter 13 verse 11 and that knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep for now is our salvation near when we believe, okay? So knowing the time, and it's high time to awake out of sleep, meaning spiritual, okay? Coming back, serving Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, and coming back into your inheritance, and believing in Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah, just not knowing that you're an Israelite, but renewing your mind, okay? Leaving off from the things of this world, man, 
and serving Yahweh Bashim, I was shot. Knowing about the times that we're coming into and not putting the day of the Lord off and preparing yourself for the destruction that's about to come. Because the only way out of it is through Yahweh Shai. Through, the, through having the covering of Yahweh Shai with you during the times of these trials and tribulations of Jacob's trouble. And it says, Romans chapter 13, verse 11, and that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than what we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Okay, and the armor of light represent the truth, represent that covering from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh And the elect is going to contain that light, contain the covering of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh And it says, but the, the night is far spent, so let us cast off the work of darkness. The work of darkness represents the confusion and the wickedness of this world that's being promoted. But you see more and more, man, all the folly is about to be done away with, man. Because we coming to the time of the Lord's wrath. All this, our people being comfortable and living it up. And the Lord is going to put the spirit on Esau to make it harder for you. And the only way you can um, be so-called comfortable is you being activated, taking this juice, and, and eventually taking the MOTB. Okay, so a lot of uncivil unrest is about to take place. A lot of um, uh, things about to erupt into these people losing it, man. But Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai have gave the warning to his men. So now we're in the time of the Lord still in the elect and you're seeing the destruction is coming. So what manner of person you ought to be? So I'm going to go ahead and end the lesson here. And I pray that the lesson may edify to the ones out there listening. Okay, sorry for the you know, in interruption. You know, you know, Satan always got to be, you know, bothering us. Hey, but we got to keep pushing, keep fighting, man. Okay. And you keep trusting in your how about Shemia was shot. The Lord is the Lord is the, the way to salvation. And out of the troublesome times that we're coming into. Okay? We're approaching those times, man. It's excited times. The ones that's in the faith and that's rooted. Okay, because cause that's we that closer to the Lord delivering and establishing the kingdom. Although the trials and tribulation must come, but those that's in the in the grace and that's in the faith of Yahweh Shemia was shot. It's going to be taken care of, man. Even if they have to be faithful unto death, the elect is going to rise anyway. And Yahweh Shah is going to conquer and rule. And we pray we be part of that number. Okay? If the majority of our people that's out here blinded, not taking heed to the, the men of the Lord, putting the day of the Lord off, they let them be. They're going to have to find out the hard way. But us that's in the faith, man, keep fighting and keep pushing. Akim and Atwaf, brothers and sisters, okay? And that Yahweh Bashim Shah is going to be our, our, our protector as we're looking forward to it, man. So I'm going to go ahead and end the lesson here. I pray that the lesson is edifying to the ones out there listening. Until the next time, I'm going to give all praises unto Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai Bashim, Rekha Kodash, second. Double honors to our apostles and elders of great millstone that teach and rule well. And salutation also to the fellow laborers and the believers that scattered worldwide. And that's in the faith and exalt in the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shah. Until the next time, Lord willing, Shalom.